Hello and welcome back to another Higher Maths video on our topic on differentiation. Today we're going to be looking at a particular type of graph which will be related to another graph and that is graphs of derivatives. Now simply put, if we're given a graph, for example, y equals f of x, the graph of its derivative, say this is some sort of curve or terrible curve, let's say it looks something like this, we would say that the graph of its derivative, which we'll call f dashed x, the graph of this is simply the derived graph of this. And it could look something quite different than that. Like It might end up looking something like this. Well, in today's video, we're going to be going over how you can work out the graph of the derivative of another given graph. So we know that the derivative of a term, let's say x to the power of n, uh, the derivative of that term is an n is an x to the n minus one term, right? We, we do bring the power on down to the front, but as we know that the term is just x to the n minus one. So for example, if we had something such as x cubed, yes, the derivative is three x squared, but the term is just x squared, correct? Well, today we're going to be looking at how to draw the derived graph from particular uh, differentials. So there's a few things we need to do before we sketch the curve. We need to work out three separate things. The first thing we want to work out are uh, all the stationary points of the original curve now become roots. So we'll say that the original stationary points are now roots. So what we mean by this is they lie on the x-axis. So all uh, stationary points on a curve, let's say we had a curve that looked like this, and we had a stationary point up here. Instead of this being a stationary point in our graph of our derivative, it's now going to be a root on the, the graph of the derivative. So it's going to lie on the x-axis, if that makes sense. The second thing we want to know is wherever the curve is strictly decreasing, the derivative is negative. So the graph of the derivative will lie below the x-axis. Basically, it will take all negative values. So we'll say where the curve is decreasing. So if our curve looks something like this, we can see it's decreasing as it goes down here. So wherever it is decreasing, the derivative is negative. And so the graph of the derivative um, will lie below the x-axis. And the final thing we want to look at is quite similar to this, except wherever it's increasing, the derivative is positive. So the graph will lie above the x-axis. So I'll just take this. If I can, please. There we go. And I'll just paste it in and change it about. Oh wow, it's really not liking this, is it? Okay, we'll pop that there. And we'll say instead that wherever the curve is increasing, the derivative becomes positive. So the graph of the derivative will lie above the x-axis. And we'll visualize what this means by looking at a little example. So wherever the curve is increasing, the derivative is positive. So the graph will lie above the x-axis. So these are the three things we need to look at when we've been given a graph of a curve 
we need to look at the stationary points, which are now going to become roots. So if we have some sort of curve, I'm just going to do this. When we do the derivative of it, it might look something completely different, but we know that stationary points are going to become roots. So in our x-axis, they're now going to become roots if we have more than one. The second thing is where the curve is decreasing. The derivative is negative, so it's decreasing here, as we can see. So here is going to be below the x-axis, somewhere down here. And wherever the curve is increasing, so here and here, the derivative is positive. So any points here will be above the x-axis. And we'll look at a few examples here. So here are a few examples using the three statements that we've written. The first graph we're looking at here is a quadratic. So that's something that's got x squared in it. And as we can see, the stationary point in this quadratic, when it's gone into the derivative, and we've got a dotted line to show how it goes to it, is simply now a root. So it's crossing the x-axis. And here we can see it's decreasing as it approaches that stationary point. So we said that that's going to be below the x-axis. So here it's below the x-axis, as we can see, but it's approaching the, the root. And then it's going to be increasing after, so it's going to be above the x-axis. So we get this very nice straight line, which is a linear um, differential. The second example, we have a cubic, which is a bit more complex. You can see we have two stationary points and it's going to be increasing and then decreasing and then increasing. So we can see that our two stationary points now become roots. And you can already kind of see because there's two roots, it's probably going to be a quadratic and we can see it's going to be increasing as it approaches the first one. So that's simply going to lie above the x-axis as it approaches it. Then it's decreasing between the two stationary points. So it's going to be below the x-axis. So it's going to curve back up as it approaches the next root. And then it's increasing from there. So it goes straight up. And the final example is a quartic. I'm not going to go through all of this one, but you can see all stationary points are now roots and all increasing and decreasing are now below or above the axis. So I'm going to do a little example here just to show you how we would do this if we had this type of question in an exam. Now usually these questions won't be too difficult because they are quite complex to, to wrap your head around what's going on. So we can see here we have the curve y equals f of x. Shown below is a cubic. It has stationary points where x equals 1 and x is equal to 4. So we can see the cubic is drawn here and we're told the stationary points occur when x is 1 and x is 4. And we are asked to sketch the graph of y equals the derivative f dashed x. Now if you forget the fact that a cubic goes to a quadratic, the best way to remember it is, well, what does cubic mean? It means something to the power of 3. Now we said that cubics look something like that. We said quadratics may look something like this. And we said that quartics, well, they'll look a bit funky, but these are the two main ones you need to remember. And because the derivative of x cubed is going to be, well, it's going to be 3x squared, but the bit we only care about is the x squared bit. We can see this is to the power of 2, so it's going to be a quadratic. So, it's very important that we look at what they've given us. They've given us the stationary points are 1 and 4. Notice they've not given us the y coordinates. That's because they don't matter because we know the stationary points in our first bullet point we wrote is that they become the roots. So we know that we're going to have two roots at the points 1 and 4. So we'll label them on. I should have probably done them to the, the side so they don't get in the way. So I'll do one and four and now we need to look at when it's increasing and decreasing so i'm going to just put two points here so we can look as it's approaching and going away from so as we can see as it approaches the first stationary point we can see it's decreasing so the derivative is going to be negative 
and thus the curve is going to be below the x-axis. So we know it's going to come up to this point from below. We don't know if it crosses the y-axis, so we'll just leave it there. And then as it goes to the next stationary point between these two, we can see it's now increasing. So it's going to be above the x-axis. Now, it obviously has to cross this point here, so we know it's going to look something like this. And then after here, we can see it's now decreasing, so it's going to go below the x-axis. And now we can see this does look like a quadratic, so we know that we've done it correct, and this is what our graph is going to look like, although you should probably label that the graph is the derivative, and this is all we have to do.